Are you sending resumes and barely getting any callbacks? Well, you're in luck today. Over the last six years, I've gotten over 20 job interviews from 27 job applications using my unique resume format. Today, I'll share with you my top strategies to craft a resume that not only passes applicant tracking systems, but also captivates every hiring manager that lays their eyes on it. Stay tuned to transform your resume from being overlooked to being overbooked. I'm Saman Ver, a data scientist living in Sydney, Australia. If you're new here, I make weekly videos to demystify data science and tech careers at large. Today, I'll share with you my four tips to level up your resume and to land your dream data science job. The first strategy is to use the KISS resume structure. KISS stands for keep it simple, stupid. You want to employ a very simple resume structure that has a maximum of six categories. Your work experience, projects, education, skills, achievement, and interest. Projects and interest are optional. Projects is only valid if you're a recent university graduate and you don't have much work experience. This is where you want to showcase all of the relevant side projects that you've worked on in order to prepare yourself for a graduate job. Make sure you only include a maximum of three projects, no more than that. So looking at this structure, you always wanna start from your work experience to begin with, because that is the most relevant section. Then you're gonna follow it by a project section if you're a new graduate, followed by an education section. Then you can consider adding a skill section to briefly outline all of the technical skills you've got some experience in if you're applying for a technical job. But in tip number four, I'll show you a better way to interweave your skills into your job achievements. Then after your skills, you wanna highlight your relevant achievements. These achievements should be relevant to the job or should help you stand out somehow out of the crowd of the multiple applicants for a single job. Then in terms of interest, you can highlight a couple of dot points. I know I always like to mention my YouTube channel given that it is a data science related hobby. And this is something that usually sets me apart from the rest of the candidates and makes me just that bit different from the rest of the competition. So try to figure out what are your types of interests that could set you apart in the resume overview process. And then aside from these three sections, in terms of contact details, you only want to include three different pieces of contact details. So first is your mobile number, your email address, and then your LinkedIn profile link. In a lot of different resumes, you can also hyperlink that LinkedIn profile URL so that recruiters can click on the link and it'll take them straight to your LinkedIn profile. And in terms of things to avoid putting on your resume, you never want to mention any PII, personal identifiable information, or any demographics related information, such as age, gender, no specific address information, especially no photos. So do not put your photo on a real resume because you're opening the door for demographics profiling. So you wanna steer clear of that. And then finally, no skill bar. You don't wanna put any sort of skill bar that tells people whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced on some level, or ranking your skill on a scale of one to 10. None of that means anything, and I can guarantee to you that your employer does not care whether your SQL is 7 out of 10 based on your arbitrary scale that you've just come up with. So leave all of that stuff out and keep your resume very, very simple following the KISS resume structure format. Now the second strategy to really level up your resume is to use the AOR framework to list achievements rather than responsibilities under each of your work experience or jobs. So every single job that you're listing on your resume should have anywhere from three to six dot points to describe the achievements that you managed to accomplish on the job. So what do I mean by the AOR framework? So AOR stands for action, outcome, and results. So every single dot point should follow an AOR structure. So you describe the action that you undertook and the outcome that was delivered as a result of that action. Then finally, you have the quantified viable result that you delivered as a result of the outcome and action you followed. So an example of this is a dot point on my resume. For this particular sentence, I managed four data engineers, which is the action I undertook. And the outcome was to deliver seven data products to unlock a total value of $30 million for 
the client. So the $30 million is the quantifiable result I managed to deliver as a result of building these seven data products. So hopefully you can see a little bit of how action outcome result framework is being applied for this job bullet point. So similarly, you wanna follow the same approach to outline all of your achievements for a given job and include anywhere from three to six bullet points. So think about the most impactful achievements and put it on your resume. And for each of these bullet points, you always want to lead with an action such as manage, develop, implemented. Now the third strategy to level up your resume is by by adopting a minimalistic template. So I talked about keeping your structure very minimalistic, but you also want to keep the template extremely minimalistic with limited amount of color so that it's not very distracting. So if you're just getting started with building your resume, then there's a great website called Beam Jobs that you can use for a heap of awesome looking resume templates. And Beam Jobs also happens to be the sponsor of this video. Thank you to all the audience for supporting the channel and for allowing me to get the channel to a point where we now have a sponsor for this video. So check out Beam Jobs. They're a service that has helped users create more than 2 million resumes. And these resumes have been used to secure interviews at companies like Stripe, Google, and Amazon, amongst the many other tech companies that users have successfully landed their dream job. So on this website, you can choose to build your resume from scratch by using one of the templates, or you can choose to adapt your existing resume. And this platform has a handy tool that ranks your resume and gives it a score out of 100 along with suggestions to improve the resume. In this case, it's asking me to modify my bullet points to quantify my impact in a more metrics driven way. So give Beam Jobs a shot to level up your resume. I'll include a link in the description below which will take you straight to the platform. Now my fourth and final tip is to interweave your technical skills amongst your job achievements. One thing I like to do is at the end of my job achievements, I like to put in brackets the list of technologies I use to accomplish that particular achievement. Let's say I've implemented a recommender engine and a customer lifetime value pipeline into production. So in brackets, I might put something like Python, sklearn, and lifetimes. So those are the packages and programming language I used to accomplish that achievement. So this has demonstrated that I'm well-versed in these technologies to be able to deliver actionable outcomes. Now, the second benefit of this is to not be rejected by the application tracking systems, which is on the lookout for relevant keywords related to a given job description. So there's no denying that all of these tips are gonna help you significantly level up your resume and secure more job interviews. But could you actually get a job interview without a resume? And the answer is yes. And this is through networking. I'll see you next in my networking video where you'll learn the skills to be able to use networking as a way for you to secure job interviews.